Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and in this video, we're going to take a look at a project I did lighting a waterfall and how it applies to you. So um, this is a little bit out of the norm for me, maybe it's out of the norm for you, but at the same time it's very much in the norm. Um, so I'm here in Idaho at Shoshone Falls, that's if you're spelling it, it's like show shown s-h-o-s-h-o-n-e um, and we're taking on a project to do a temporary uh, lighting to music of these falls now uh, i gotta thank first off the bat uh visit southern idaho uh arnell and melissa for bringing me out here now um the project so this is something a little bit different uh, the end result just to give you a teaser looks something like this and so how do you even start a project like this? Well, you know, the way that something like this works uh, and, and what you can learn from it, whether you're trying to be a professional lighting designer, you know, grow into that or just are on the hobbyist level, is that, uh, you know, I got an email a few months ago, maybe more, uh, from Arnell at Visit Southern Idaho saying, hey, we want to light this waterfall. We've been talking to the people from Niagara Falls um, who, who lit Niagara Falls, and you know we've got a pretty good idea of what we need, but uh, we need a little help, and we need help programming, and that's how we found you. That's me, right, through Lauren Stage Lighting. And so uh, I said, okay, let's talk about it, because you know I get a good number of emails like this. Okay, fast forward, woo, 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 woo. we figured it out, and I was ready to roll. They picked some music, and I started programming, uh, just to give you an idea of how something like this comes together, uh, in the cap visualizer, though we didn't have exact specs on the lights we were using, uh, more on that in a second, you know, I went ahead and, and we started programming stuff so that um, on site we'd really just be tweaking our, our palettes, our presets in Onyx, and tweaking some of the cues as we go. And so a project like this, I sat at home uh, in my office with the, with the Capture Visualizer and with my Onyx NX Wing and programmed away uh, making visualizations that looked something like this, okay? And sent those off for approval, you know, made a, a couple notes as we went along, but ultimately, you know, uh, what we wanted to do ahead of time is we knew, okay, uh, the lights we're using are a specialty waterfall light from a company called Stanley Lighting. Okay, they make they made the lights that light up Niagara Falls. And this product uh, was new, and they didn't have photometrics for us uh, at the time of the recording of the pre-program. So I just went into the visualizer, into Capture, and I brought in the closest bright 5-degree light that was RGBW that I could find, um, because that's what these lights are. And so we knew going into it that the visualization wasn't going to be perfect uh, because we weren't totally sure on all the dimensions, uh, we weren't totally sure the exact positions where the lights would sit, and we weren't totally sure of the brightness of the lights and the individual colors and, and how that would translate given that we were visualizing with a slightly different light. Okay, so rig-wise, we got on site and we've got 36 of these Stanley fixtures, which were pointing in 12 zones on the falls. So each zone has three lights on it. And we also have six ADJ Hydro Beam X2s, which is a great beam aerial effects light. And most importantly, it is IP65 rated because all this stuff's going to be outside. So we got to be IP rated. Okay, so we started programming, and uh, then the next step was to come on site, which is where I've been for the past few days. Okay, now with Visit Southern Idaho, we agreed um, that, you know, I would come and do the programming, um, they would deal with making sure everything was set up, uh, and, and I would give them some guidance there as to what they needed to do. So we got on site, helped them finish the setup, and uh, first night we were able to turn lights on, see them on the falls, and, and get some really good ideas of how this thing was going to look. Then last night, night two, was even more fun because we really got into programming. So after night one, uh, we knew that we needed to move some of the lights because they, the beam where we need to point them would hit the scaffolding that they were set upon, okay? Because this is a temporary installation. We're using some scaffolding. Uh, that was what they decided to do. So some of them were hitting, you know, the bars of the scaffolding and really reflecting a lot of light back, which doesn't look great, plus it blocks out some of the light. So they moved some of the lights. Last night, we were able to go in, uh, focus all of the lights, uh, 
Arnell from Visit Southern Idaho did that for me, and uh, Into the Twelve Zones, and then really begin looking at the show and really begin dialing it in. And so we did. Um, and, you know, we found out a couple really interesting things. One, um, the waterfall turns into a hydroelectric uh, power plant at night. And so they actually redirect the water off of the falls into the power plant. And so while we were programming, uh, we did run into that where we didn't have a lot of water. And so we knew that what we were doing, though it looked uh, good and we were happy with it, we knew that it could look better and it would look better and it will look better when water is fully flowing. Okay, so let's hop in and come back here uh, for my last night here where, you know, I've gotten Arnell up to speed. He's going to be running the show uh, starting May 14th, and we're going to look at uh, just some programming tweaks, look at how everything looks, and then recap this all uh, once I get back home to Nashville. So, now I'm back, coffeeed up, ready to go. And so the next night, uh, we got back to the falls, um, dealt with some sprinkler issues uh, on site. Thankfully, all the lights were waterproof, uh, but everything was great. Laptops got a little wet, but it was okay. Um, and then we got to really dialing in and, and programming. And we sat down, um, both um, Melissa, who is the director of Southern Idaho Tourism, Arnell, who brought me in on the project, and myself, and you know a couple of their other friends. We sat down and, and really watched the show through. Uh, what we ended up doing was we had, just for the, the technical details, is we were running Onyx using timecode via Time Lord, which I teach in this video, also inside Learn Stage Lighting Labs. And what we did is we had one laptop plugged in to the Onyx NX DMX up at the lights. Now, initially, I thought it was we were going to be able to see really well, be able to see the falls from where the lights sat uh, based on pictures they'd sent me, but it turned out there was some brush in the way that, that was really causing a problem. It was a bit overgrown. So what we ended up doing was I just took a small router that I have, hooked it up to their computer, which sat up at the lights, plugged in with the NX DMX, ran Onyx's built-in NetX mode to be able to network two Onyx PCs together, and then through a bunch of rocks and down a, a hill with a bunch of metal railings, we managed to get a stable wireless signal most of the time to the viewing platform. From there, we programmed away. We basically looked at the show, which I had visualized previous, and began to really break it apart and really make it look great on the rocks. Now, I say on the rocks because um, that's not a reference to putting something on uh, uh, as a beverage, but <laughs> what I mean is, as I mentioned before, the water got turned off at night on the falls, so there was very little water that we were looking at. Now, considerations here, okay? In programming, and I know all of you, most of you are probably not gonna go program a waterfall tomorrow, but it's helpful to see the lighting design process and to think about it. So we be, we've got basically two layers of light that we get to work with on this installation. The first are the Stanley lights, which are um, a specialty waterfall light, RGBW, that were pointed at the falls in 12 zones. That was our first layer. And they look pretty decent on the rocks, but when the water is going at full, they're gonna look really great. Second layer was the ADJ Hydro Beam X2s that we had in place. Now these Hydro Beams um, were up on some scaffolding back where the other lights were, and they served two purposes, okay? The first is, well, technically three actually. The first is that we shine them at the falls sometimes. We put the prism in, pop in some breakup gobos, and we get some really cool looks on the falls. Now, on the rocks, it looks really clear and really great. Uh, when the water's flowing, what we're probably going to see when it's flowing at full is, and, and we'll check back later with some video, is we're going to see, okay, there's gonna be um, probably less definition to those gobos on the water. You may not even see the pattern on the water, but through the air, it's likely because of all the mist from the water that you're gonna see some really cool beam patterns. Number two uh, purpose for the Hydro Beam X2s was to do aerial effects. Of course, that's what a beam light is for, to make effects in the air. And so we made use of these things, and they're bright. We made use of their gobos, of their colors, um, of their prisms at times, even used their frost a couple times uh, just to change things up. And we were able to make a variety of different looks and really build up that energy. Um, because if you think about it, 
it's a waterfall light show. And so at the end of the day, um, the purpose is to get people looking at the falls. But for people standing further back, um, they're gonna see more of the beam effects. And, and what we can do then is, okay, we're pretty much always lighting the falls. Like there are some times where, um, you know, we black out the falls for like a second, but the falls are gonna be lit the whole time, changing colors, patterns, etc. okay? And then the beams then are gonna come in and out. There's times where they're coming in, there's times where they're popping out, they're moving around. Sometimes they're shining over the parking lot area, which is behind the main viewing platform, so that people up in the parking lot, up on the hill above it, still get a great show. Other times they're pointed at the falls or beams above the falls, making a really cool beam ceiling over the, over the viewing area. And so that's what we ran into with programming. We sat down, really um, had a great time being able to work together while it was a little bit cold and windy uh, and, you know, dish out, just look at different color combinations and really tweak the programming that I'd made before I got on site to make it really match what they were looking for. At the end of the day, we ended up with a great show and here's how it ended up looking with more water. As you can see, it's really impressive, really cool. Thank you guys so much. Thanks to Melissa and Arnell from Southern Idaho Tourism, uh, Visit South Idaho. I really appreciate you guys bringing me out. If you do happen to find yourself in Idaho um, next week or so, their, their show will start May 14th and it will go through the 31st this year. Um, it's going to be, you know, pre-recorded music show on a loop. And so about every 30 minutes it will restart and you'll be able to see the show with the music, which I can't show here because they own the licensing, I don't. Um, so you'll be able to see the show with the music, be able to really have a lot of fun with lights and be able to just enjoy an outdoor activity that we can do in this time. So thanks so much for them. Check it out if you happen to be in Southern Idaho. It's in the Boise area in Twin Falls, Idaho, about two hours from Boise, three hours from Salt Lake. And I hope you have a great day. If you haven't already, subscribe here on Learn Stage Lighting. And if you're new to lighting, you saw this and you said, hey, I'm, I'm lighting a waterfall, I'd like some help. Um, go grab my free guide to begin with lighting at learnstagelighting.com. Not that it's particularly applicable to waterfalls, but it will help you learn the basics. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys in our next video when you subscribe. Thanks.